סלאם זה הטעינה הסתלם. מלקאם, מלקאם שבועות, שבועות שמח. יש מלקאם באללה מנפס קדוס. יש this feast of the Holy Spirit, this Ethiopian Pentecost day, or the Pentecost, this day, Juneteenth, also known as, um, as Juneteenth. And we're about to get into that, but first things first, a review of the previous Torah portion. And um, this is important to articulate on because the question has come up and some reasonings related to the Nazarite vow. And of course, uh, Rastafari, that fulfillment of the way of the Nazarene. So Nazarene or Nazarite and Nazarene are, are related, but not the same. So Nazarite, when we're speaking of the Nazarite vow and the Nazarene, speaking of Adonenu Yeshua, speaking of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, that they are related, but not the same. Now, in what way are, are they related and in what way um, they are not the same? This is this is a key and, and this is kind of pointing forward to a, a lecture and, and a study, but just addressing some of the basics of that particular question concerning the Nazarite, the Nazarite vow and the Nazarene. Now, in the previous Torah portion, in the previous Torah portion, let's go right over here. In the previous Torah portion was the 35th, um, the 35th uh, sabbatical, right? In the 35th sabbatical, we addressed uh, the Nazarite vow in Numbers, uh, Numbers chapter 6, Numbers chapter 6 and the Nazarite vow which uh, contains uh, the commandment and the precept to uh, grow the locks, right? to grow the locks for one who has taken that willing and that votive um, um, vow or offering in that sense, you know, the Nazarite vow. Now, in the previous Torah portion right here, this is uh, the Torah portion from the 35th. And we're here at RastafariGroundation.com. I and I, Grace Book, on the internet. That's RastafariGroundation.com. And here, this is the write-up from the previous Torah portion, just showing the fullness of the page. Now, over here, we're in the 36th sabbatical, beginning on this uh, first day, the Ehud, or the Sunday, which also corresponds with uh, the Aleh, Menfes Kedus, or the Feast of the Holy Spirit, the descent of the Holy Spirit in the upper room of Zion. So beginning this first day, we are beginning a, a new cycle of Torah portion reading and feedings. Beha Alotika. Beha Alotika. When you when you set up or when thou lightest when thou lightest up. Oh, amen. And so this will be the third reading coming up in, in this um, this sabbatical strong or this week's Torah portion will be the third reading in the book of Numbers. Now, the second reading in the book of Numbers, which uh, links with the Nazarite vow, Okay, let's bring this over here. Here we go. The Torah portion, the week's reading that ended on uh, 6, 18, June 18, 2016, according to the Gregorian, um, according to the Gregorian calendar. It was called Naso, Naso et Rosh. Lift up, lift the head, lift the Rosh, lift the Ras. In the King James Version, it says, uh, take the sum. In the Hebrew, the Masoretic, naso et arosh, lift up the head, the raising up, the rising up to the service, to the service in the host. The sabaot, both the host of the men um, 20 years and above, um, able to go to war. And in the Naso reading, we continued the census count as well as 
the duties, the priestly duties and the responsibilities of the Levites, of the Levites in the Levitical order. Now, in the previous Torah portion, reading and feeding on the fourth day, the fourth Aliyah, right here, Numbers, it comprised uh, Numbers 5, 11 to 6, uh, 27, right, containing the vow of the Nazarites. So we have it right here, the Nazarites, in 6 and 1 of Numbers, the book of Numbers, the fourth book of Moses, known as Bamidbar, Bamidbar in the wilderness. According to the Ethiopic, this the Orit, the Ethiopic Torah, the Orit Zechulkwe, Zechulkwe, which is the Torah of the enumeration or of the, the count, the counting, Zechulkwe. And that was the 35th uh, sabbatical, the previous uh sabbatical study and the Torah portion reading and feeding for that week and also or in the HSV the Hala Selassie version known as Wuset Wuset take the sum so we're just reviewing right here I um, give thanks to Wendem Aaron Wendem Aaron for his uh, co-laborers and you can see right here the we call this a sabbatical the RSS PowerPoints Right here, the presentation going into the words and the Ethiopic and the Afro-Shemitic in order to get a better groundation and understanding um, in our studies. So this is what we have right here. I'm dealing with the key words, certain of the key words, Naso, Wised, Tinsae, Nessa. There we go right here, Nessa. Now we have this right here, Nessa. Nessa, to take, take a part of something, to take away, it can also mean to deprive, to hold back on something, to refuse, to fulfill a promise, to withdraw a promise, to absorb, to soak up, to take on human form. Interesting, to take on Nessa, to undergo the incarnation. So concerning Moshiach, the incarnation of Moshiach, when we study the Afro-Shemitic and the pure language that he who be who he be has turned to we from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, our Afro-Shemitic, the royal Amharic of the Metzhav Kedus, the Haile Selassie version of the Bible. Um, which is the book of the seven seals according to Revelation 5.5. 5. Now, just um, as we said, we're just going over right here just as a, as a point of reference. Right? What a beautiful, you know, beautiful itiful art and facts. Just going over some of the basic art and facts here. So the Nazarite vow, the Nazarite vow. So here we have it, the Nazarite vow. So now we're in this 36th um, sabbatical, Beha Alotika. When thou lightest, or when thou steppest up, concerning what begins off with the lighting of the menorah, which is interesting when we consider um, Juneteenth or June 19th in this present season. But let's get into that a little bit more as we um, go forward. A little more on how the Nazarite vow and the Nazarene is not the same we could say, but similar, but related. It's related. The Nazarite vow and the and the Nazarene. When we speak of the Nazarene, we are speaking of Yeshua HaMoshiach. All right. So now, when we're speaking of dreadlocks, we're speaking of um, in the world, it's known as a hairstyle, right? But in the Torah. It is part and parcel of the vow of the Nazarite being set apart. Now, in the Haftarah, the prophet reading from the previous sabbatical, the 35th uh, sabbatical, uh, Naso, Naso et Rosh, lift the head, lift the Rosh, lift the Ras, lift up Ras the Farai. So, we have Samson, the story concerning Samson. By Samson, um, Shamshun, Shamshun. He was a Nazarite from birth. Right? He was a Nazarite from birth. And then we also have um, Apostle Paul. 
All right. Apostle Paul, let's go right here. Okay, here we go. The Apostle Paul. And Apostle Paul, or St. Paul, he also had a vow of the Nazarite as well. So we find that this from the Old Testament straight through to the New Testament. All right, so right here, let's, uh, so the Nazarite vow. Not the same, but related. Not the same, but there are certain similarities. Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos, Getachini Jesus Christos. He is the fulfillment, our black Lord and Savior, the Moshiach. Yeshua is the fulfillment of that way that we have in numbers concerning the vow of the Nazarite, that perfection. All of this, we have to remember that the Old Testament these are shadows and types leading to that fulfillment, as we showed you already in the Word, and give thanks to Wendem Aaron again, and also check out um, Discipleship Radio on the YouTubes, you know, for the re-podcast along with Word, Picks, and Art of our After the Sabbath on the Blog Talk Radio, After the Sabbath broadcast on Discipleship Radio on the Blog Talk Radio. For the times and listings, check out Rastafari Ground Nation. But a little bit here on the vow of the Nazarite and the Nazarene, or Yeshua of Nazareth, Yeshua ha Notsri or Natsri, Notsri. Now, the first thing we have to consider, let's go right here. Okay, here we are at, here we go right here. When thou lightest up, let's go to Numbers chapter 6. All right, let's go to Numbers chapter 6. In Numbers chapter 6, from the previous Torah portion, reading and feeding, it says, And Jah and Yahweh, he who be who he be, spake to Moshe, to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them when either or either man, right, either man, ish, or woman, or isha, shall separate themselves. So it's a vow of separation, pala, 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 um, to separate, to distinguish. To be great, but also difficult and wonderful is all contained in the Hebrew, in this Hebrew word for separation. Shall separate themselves. But the idea of separation is intimately connected with um, the Kadosh and the Kadoshim, uh, the, Kadoshim the set apart ones, or being holy, being set apart. Shall separate themselves to vow. So we have the vow or the nadr. Right, the nadar, the nadar is to promise. It's a promise to do, or a promise to give something. So when we're speaking about the vows, right? The nedarim, the nedarim of the vows, and this right here for the children of Israel, and within the covenant, the children of the Ethiopian see Amos nine and seven. Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? This is the reason why we have the testimony of the Bahitawi, even today in the true church of the professing church known as the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, the true church of His Majesty of Kedemawi Haile Selassie, of the Moa Anbesa Zaim Negeri Yehuda of the root of David, of the King of Kings, in the professing Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church, we have the Bahitawi, the Bahitawi, and when we get into even what does Bahitete, Bahititu mean, it means to be alone and to be, to be in that, like monastic, it has the idea of alone or set apart, the Bahitawi. Right, the Bahitawi, that idea of the monogenes or the only begotten, even in the example of the Moshiach Yeshua, when he went into the Gedam, the Gedam, Bamidbar, into the wilderness. Right? And we also have that trod and tradition within the Essenes and even in John the Baptist. 
right? Even in John the Baptist, we can see where that 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 way of the Nazarite and the Nazarene way was trotted even by John the Baptist. So we have the root right here of all that which is to follow. So the word that we have here in the Torah, especially in Numbers chapter six concerning the Nazarite vow, is like the seed. Right, it's like that seed of the word. We see some of the first growths, for example, in the um, 35th uh, um, prophet reading from the law, we're right here in Numbers, and from the prophet, it was Judges chapter 13 concerning the birth of Samson, right? or Shamson, or Samson, Samson, <laughs> a Nazarite from the womb, from the bet, and from the matrix. He was a Nazarite from the womb right so this is interesting so we have that example of this particular way and elsewhere as well if you do a, a basic search of nazar within the scriptures and i think there's about 43 matches in the kjv in the king james version but the root and the groundation for all that which is to follow and all that which is to come and the fulfillment in yeshua hamoshia yesus christos is found right here in our 35th uh, Torah portion reading and feeding that was known as Naso, Naso et Rosh. Take the sum, lift the Rosh, lift the head, lift the Ras. Right? Lift the Ras. So the Nazarite vow, the vow is the Nedar. A Nedar is a promise to make a promise or a vow, but in the context of a promise to do something for God or to Elohim, to his way, truth and life, or to give something to Ha Elohim, Baruch, Hu Baruch Hashem. So it says, when either man or woman, Ish or Isha, so it's non-partial there, it's not just for the man them, and it's not just for the woman them, so it's for either man or woman. So here we get a fourth type, a fourth shadowing of what is written in the Berit Chadash or the New Testament, where it says that there is neither male nor female in Moshiach. Moshiach, the anointed, the, the ointment and the anointing. And we see this right here very perfectly in this groundational. This is the groundation, this is the seed for the ground, right? As we till up the soil, right? Of our consciousness, of our heads and our hearts and our feelings and our thoughts as we meditate on this. A man or a woman, right? So male or female. Now, remember, the fulfillment of the Nazarite vow and the Nazarite way is in and through Adunenu, our Lord, our sovereign, Yeshua HaMoshiach, who is known in the scripture as Yeshua HaNotsri, Yeshua HaNotsri, Natsri, right, or Jesus or Jesus of Nazareth. So, not the same. Right, Nazarite, Nazarene, but similar and related. So in what way are they related? And also, let's begin off with in what ways that they are not the same. So the first things first, the vow, a vow, right, to Nadar or Nader, a Neder, right, a Neder to vow a promise or something that is promised, right, to Elohim to Hashem, to the source, to the power of Israel, of a Nazarite. So another key thing is that the Nazarite vow, in the context of Numbers chapter 6, was concerning and spoken to the B'nai Yisrael. Right? It was spoken specifically to the children of Israel. Now, does this mean that only the children of Israel grow locks or what some will call dreadlocks? Of course not. But the context, the true context of the locks, many people can grow locks for many different reasons, for stylistic reasons, for, you know, many different reasons. But the reason for the Nazarite vow is given to us right here in the Torah, and specifically in the fourth book of Amashu, Moshe, of Moses, known as Numbers, or in the Hebrew, Bamidbar. 
in the wilderness. Now, you find this interesting that with the baptism of Yeshua HaMoshiach, one of the first things that was that he did when it says that the spirit, the Ruach, led him into the wilderness, Bamidbar, to be what? To be tempted of Ha Satan, to be tempted of the devil. So we have this connection with the wilderness experience of Yeshua HaMoshiach in the Burit Hadasha and the groundation right here in the Torah concerning the children of Israel after they had come out from um, Mitzrayim, from Kemet, from Egypt, 50 days, Mount Sinai, a little after that, setting up the tabernacle, and then the journeying into the wilderness, right? the wilderness of Sinai, the wilderness of Sinai. So here we have Nazir, the Nazir. Right, so let's look at this word for a moment right here, the Nazir. So we have the Nazir, or Nazir, the Nazir, Nazir. The Nazir is the meaning that's given right here, and we're looking at the Mackelson's and Hans uh, Strong's, uh, Strong's uh, Dictionary right here, the Mackelson's and Hans. Uh, and, and, we'll, and we keep emphasizing, oh, actually it's not Mackelson, it's Mickelson, Slika, Slika. I, you could have done, hey, forgive I, it's uh, Mickelson's, right? The Mickelson's Enhanced uh, Strong's uh, um, Dictionary and the Concordance, both for the Old and the New Testament, because Nazir here in the Old Testament, Nazarene there in the New Testament. So first things first, the Torah, the H, the Hebrew, you see the H, 5139. So this is the key um, point of reference, so like in the, for example, this word program, if we want to search it out, we can put that there and we can see whenever this word appears within the Masoretic, within the scriptures of the Torah, five books, the Ketubim, the writings, the Migalot, the, the scrolls, um, the Nabim, or the prophets concerning the Hebrew um, scriptures. Amen. So to separate i.e. consecrated. Now, you notice the context right here. The consecration is as prince, because it says princes shall come out of Egypt, right? Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to Elohim, to the power, to Hashem. Now, this is what's very key, as we, you're going to see these overlapping patterns within the scripture. Pay attention to these patterns here. So we have the Nazir, the Nazir, or the Nazir, the Nazir is related to Prince, a consecration, right? A consecration. Now, this is interesting because when the Levites, the priests, were, and, 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 and Aaron being consecrated, they were anointed and, and prepared in a special way. So we see that at the root of Nazir, it means to separate but to separate in the context of a consecration and a consecration as a prince, right? thus a Nazirite or a Nazir. So in the Hebrew, we have Nazir right here. And then the English, they usually put the it. So we have Nazir, right? The Nazir. Hence, the second entry in a figurative, right? A figurative from the latter means an unpruned vine. So for either a ish or an isha to um, vow a vow of the Nazarite and to grow their locks, the likeness right there is likened to a vine, like in a vineyard, a vine that has not been pruned, has not been shorn, in other words, has not been um, has not been trimmed by right? the untrimmed. Speaking of an untrimmed, uh, an untrimmed vine, right? So for ish o, right? Ish o isha for either a male, right, or a man or a woman. So the idea right here concerning the Nazarite and the link with the vine. Remember how the Moshiach, how Yeshua says that his father, 
Our father is the husband man and he is the true, what? The true vine. So when we're speaking of that true Nazir, right? Now you see right down here where it says uh, KJV, Nazarite. Then they open parenthesis, it says, by a false alliteration, right? With Nazareth. In other words, uh, a, a false alliteration, alliteration, literate, letter. It's a letter by a false letter. What is the false letter? Right? The false letter, when we go to the Hebrew, we have Nazir. And properly, when we go to Nazarite, right? Or, I mean, Nazarene, when we go to Nazarene from the New Testament sense, it's ha notzri, ha notzri. So there is. There is the Zai or the Zain, right? The Zai, the Ze, the Ze, and the Tse. The Ze and Tse. In Nazarene, we have the Tse or the Tsedai, the Tsade, the Tsade, the Tsedai, the Tse and the Ze. So this is what it means when you see the when you see this this idea, the false alliteration. The false alliteration was this Z sound put with Nazareth instead of a, probably a TS or a TZ. A TZ in the Latin or the so-called English letters would have been a little more appropriate. So they say Nazarite by a false alliteration with Nazareth, right? Or um, Notsri, right? Notsrit, Notsri. Ha Notsri, Yeshua Ha Notsri. But what is Notsri? Right? What is the Notsri? Okay, that's the second part. Separated, vine undressed. So a vine that has not been dressed. Dressed means to, you know, be trimmed. Has not been trimmed. Unshorn, untrimmed. Now let's get to the root. This is from the H5144. You see the h 5144. We're just um, looking at Nazar and Nazir, or the Nazarite, right? The Nazarite. So the root right here, H5144, Nazar, the root of Nazir, right? Nazir, Nazarite, Nazar means to hold aloof, to hold aloof, almost like to hold at bay, right? I.e., intransitively to abstain, to abstain. You know, to abstain, for example, to abstain from, you know, the wine and the strong drinks in the Nazarite vow, we have that there from drink or food and drink, to abstain from food and drink. So we see this is very intimately related to the idea of fasting. We have the idea of fasting here. Once again, after the baptism of Yeshua HaMoshiach, of Jesus Christos, that the Spirit led him into the what? Into the wilderness to be tempted, right, of Hasatan. So in that wilderness, and he fasted for what? He what? Abstained from what? From food and from what? From drink for how long? For 40 days, right? For 40 days. The Israelites, they were in the wilderness. Right? In a sense, they had abstained, in a sense, from the promised land, mostly due to their failure, right? their failure to shema, their failure to hear and to obey. Right? So a whole generation, right? a whole generation that was brought out, right? that was brought out of um, Kemet or Mitzrayim, Egypt, right? in a sense, abstained in the wilderness for 40 years. The Messiah in the wilderness for 40 days. So you see these, these signs, these patterns, these, this is what we say related or these similarities. But because they are similar does not mean that they're the same. So the Nazarite vow or the Nazarite vow and the Nazarene are not the same, but related. And there are similarities. And we're seeking to bring out at least some of the basics some of the Peshat, what we call the Peshat, the plain, the basics, some of the, like the kindergarten and the elementary, right? Some of the elementary points right here. Now, for, to abstain from food and drink, also to abstain from impurity 
and even, in a sense, to abstain from divine worship. Now, when one abstains from divine worship, that can also be interpreted as apostizing, right, or falling away. But notice something. In that sense, we as Rastafari have, have in a sense, fallen away or come out of Babylon. So we abstain from Babylon's pseudo divine worship or counterfeit Christianity and coming out of Babylon. So to our family, right, to our flesh, you know, our natural ones and ones, they would say, well, if we used to, you know, um, be with the counterfeit Christian churches and the counterfeit Christianity. And now as we come out of Babylon from their perspective, we will seem like apostates, but from the truth of the King of Kings in Christ. We know that we have come out of Babylon, right? Because we are job people. So that connection with the vow of the Nazarite, the, the, the growing of the locks and the meaning of separation and setting apart and the fact that it is for Ish or Isha, for man or woman. Now the second entry of Nazar, the age 5144, specifically means to set a part. So the meaning of na Nazar is related to the meaning of Kadash, right? Or Kadosh, right? To be holy. That's why you see in the bracket, open bracket, to sacred or to holy, right? To Ivine, divine, Ivine, divine, Ivine, the vineyard, the Ivine. You see the link rate, even, even through the English, right? We have the testimony of the spirit of truth. Even in the English, if we look at Ivine, right? Ivine. And Yeshua HaMoshiach says that his father is the husbandman and he is the true vine, that true fulfillment and perfection of that way that was known as the Nazarite vow, right? Because he is ha notsri, he is the Nazarene. So specifically, he's the Holy One, right? He is the um, ha chesid, right? Ha kadosh, to set apart to sacred purposes, i.e. to devote. Now, the word devote is interesting because the word vote, votive, means something said. So the idea of devote, you know, to vote is really to give your voice. That's what vote means. So one who is devoted has given their voice or has vowed, right, has vowed audibly, right, the vow of the Nazarite to separate, to consecrate, to separate, separating, separating themselves. So in the New Testament it says, be ye separate, right, be ye kadosh, right, even as I am kadosh, the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of Truth says, be ye separate. So once again, that link with the Nazarite, right, the Nazarite vow. Right, so the formula here, a man, an ish, or au isha, when he takes, right, the vow is open, right, the vow is open to man and woman, to male and to, and to female. The vow is considered special, right, special, set apart in view, in Jah's view of the use Right of the use of the word um, yaf yafila yafli yafli yafala, right? Um, which means to be wonderful, right? To be extraordinary, to be extraordinary, right? To vow a vow, right? To vow a vow. In the language, there's a there's an infinitive construct that's followed by a cognate. Accusata accusative to vow a vow, to intensify the idea that the vow is being taken with care. Right? So as we study even the Hebrew, that, that comes out. There's an intensity of the idea that the vow, the Nazir, right? the Nazir Nedar, or the Nedar Nazir, 
is being taken with vow. It's not just a casual thing. Like, oh, I just stopped combing my hair. And it, I mean, in that sense, not under, you know, not under the law, right? We're not under the law, right? We are in-laws in the Moshiach Yeshua. But when we look at those who are under law, right, it was given with the idea that this vow should be taken with care, right? Be careful, right? The name of the vow is taken from the verb, right? So what is this nedar, right? This nedar is the nazar, right? The nazar. What is or who is the one that takes the vow is the nazir, right? Which means literally to consecrate, right? Oneself. So this is a self-consecration vow, the vow of a Nazarite. And so the Nazir or the Nazarite is a consecrated or a set apart one, right? These are the folks, right? These are the sort of people who would make a decision to take an oath for a time, right? For a time or for a lifetime to be committed to Ha'adon, right? To be committed to Adonai, Yah. Right. To be committed to the Lord and to show the signs, right, this outward sign of separation or set apartness from the world. Now, within the scriptures, there were. I mean, there were many ones, uh, especially a few key ones that we can point to who were Nazarites, right, who were Nazarites, right. Who were Nazarites? For example, there was um, there was uh, Samson. Let's go right over here. Let's bring this up right here, right here. You can see this right here. Some of the notes, the following notes. As we go even a little deeper, right? Samson. I mean, Samson was a Nazarite, but Samuel, Samuel, right, was to be a Nazarite. Right? He will be a Nazir. In First uh, Samuel one and twenty two says that Samuel would be a Nazir forever, right? Forever. So to consecrate oneself, to set apart oneself, or just to be consecrated to Ha'adon, to Yahweh, to Yahweh, truth and life. And as we study the Hebrew, the Hebrew is really an interesting. You know some of the constructions some of the word play that is also found, you know, as well as some of the internal explanations within that chapter. The English is the English gives us a basic idea. But but when we study, we even get a, a, a much better idea. But the general idea is one who would vow a vow of self-separation or self-consecration. Right, self consecration of of abstinence. So let's bring this down here. Let's bring this down here. So that's on the Nazir, right? That's on the Nazir or the Nazarite. Now let's quickly go to the New Testament. Let's quickly go to the New Testament. The first place in the New Testament that we find that we find um, Nazir. Nazarene. Now remember that there's a false alliteration, a false lettering. So we have Nazarite with a Z and we have Nazarene with a Z. In the Hebrew, there's two different sounds. There's the Zai or the Z, the Z sound, and there's the Tzadai, the Tzadai, the Tzadai, as when we say Yeshua Ha Notzri. Ha Nazri, Nazri. It's not Ha Nazri, not Ha Nazri, but Ha Nazri or Notri, Notri. So Tzadai and Zai. Right? So this is why they are not, these two words are not the same, but there's a similarity and there's a very, um, intimate relation, especially in the fulfillment in Yeshua. All right, so let's go right here to Matthew 2 and 23. All right, so in Matthew 2 and 23, here we go right here. The gospel according to Matthew, Mateos, 
chapter 2, verse 23. And he, he came and he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth. Nazareth. Right? He dwelt in a city called Nazareth. Right? Now, um, Slika, you could, uh, I don't have the my Hebrew uh, New Testament, but we've studied this out of the Hebrew, and this is where we have seen that difference, right? But also in a deeper study, we also have seen the relation, right? But he was called, right, or the city was called Nazareth, right? So let's go right here to the G, right? Nazareth, right? And Nazareth. Now, this is what makes it very curious, right over here this is what makes it very curious let's do this right here okay let's open this up a little bit nazareth nazareth now you see you, you see the lettering do you see the lettering in the parentheses now the greek up here not uh not zaret 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 Tsa, tsa, right? Tsa, tsa. So what we have is nad zareth. So they explain to you from the Hebrew this particular letter right here, right? I think that's a ah oh man chant that particular letter right there. It's a type of sigma, sky sty stigma. I think it's stigma. I think that's a stigma if I'm correct. That's stigma, not sigma. Uh, but, but stigma, right? Anyway, the sound has like a D and a Z. It's the sound that they use for like um, um, words like, I think, uh, uh, t -t 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 -t. I think like Zeus. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a Z sound, but it's very unique to the Afro-Shemitic uh, speakers. That's why you see even in the brackets, they explain to you that there's like a D or a T. We explained before that the tzadai, 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 tzadai. It's, it's a peculiar, you know, it's like fine wine. It's a quiet taste, that particular sound right there. But it's not the regular zai or z. It's not a regular z. It's not a regular z sound. So they explain to us right here, even in the Greek transliteration, right? They explain even in these two letters, the D and the Z. Now, they say a place in Israel, but they say of uncertain derivation. So they are not able, according to this right here, to derive the roots of this particular place. How interesting is that? This place is of a uncertain derivation. Right? So it's derived from where? They don't know. Right? But it's clear from the scripture right here that there is, here we go right here. Let's see. And he came and dwelt. Remember, this is after returning, after Herod was dead. Right? Who saw it? The youths who sought that black child, the black child, the black Messiah, Yeshua's life after he was dead, him and the family, they came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, right? by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Now, this is particularly interesting for Bible stu stu scholars and studiers, students of the Bible. Where do we have a prophecy? Can you find for me a prophecy where it says that he will be called a Nazarene? Now, remember, they returned after the death of Herod from Kemet. They came out of Kemet. Right, out of Egypt. They returned from Egypt. They dwelt in the city that was known as Nazareth, right? Notsri, right? Notsrit, right? Nazareth. And it is to fulfill, or this fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophets. 
right? The Nabim. He shall be called a Nazarene. All right, so let's go right here to the G34, right? And let's bring this up right here. And it says, Nats or Rhinos, Nats or Rios, 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 Nats or Ryan. What's a Nazarian? They say it's an inhabitant of Nazareth. The second entry says, by extension, why? By extension, it's a Christian. Hmm. Well, before they were called Christians, they were called Nazarenes. We also have that as well, I think, in Acts of the Apostles. That before they were called Christians in a place called Antiochia, or known as Antioch, they were known as Nazarenes, right? As Nazarenes, even the Apostle Paul had a vow. The scripture is very clear to say to state that he had a vow, right? And he had fulfilled that vow of a Nazarite in a Nazir in the, the Temple of Jerusalem. We have that testimony as well. So when they say a Christian, we need to understand it from the Hebrew perspective of the Moshiach, right? Or a Messiahite or a Meshahawian, a Meshahawian. They were called like a Meshahawian, a, a Amen, one who Amens in the Moshiach, Yeshua, right? Before they were called Christians. But it's interesting because this vow, of the Nazarite, they try to distance too far the Nazarene and Nazarite connection. Yes, there is that letter, right? Difference between the Z and the uh, the uh, the uh, either a DZ or a TZ sound, or perhaps TS or a DS. Depends on how you choose to transliterate it, how you choose to um, alliterate it. You know, that means take it out of the sound of the other language and use other letters in another language to give an approximate sound. So the simple sound is the Z sound for the the Gentile or, or the non-Hebrew or Afro-Shemitic speaker. Oh, so they say that this right here is from this same place. So whenever you see that question mark there, that means that's the deepest that their studies can take it. So usually after that, we will go to the pure language as Zephaniah 3 and 9 and 10 says, for then I will turn to the people at pure language that they all may call upon the name of Yahweh of Jah to serve him with one consent from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Yes, it says that there. So we have Isaiah 11 and... Let's zoom this out right here. We have Isaiah 11 and 1 and Isaiah 60 and 21 and Zechariah or Zechariah 6 and 12. In Isaiah 11 and 1, here's where we get the root right here. I'm Isaiah 11 and 1. And there shall come forth and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, out of the stem of uh, Yeshai, 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 right? David's father, right? Jesse, right? And a branch, here we go, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Now, you remember how the Nazarite, they said the Nazarite, um, Nazir, the Nazarite also refers to like an, an undressed vine, right? Or an unpruned vine, a vine that has not been pruned, a vine that has not been dressed, in the words, that has not been trimmed. Look at this right here. Now, remember what it says in Matthew, Matthew 2 and 23. Matthew 2 and 23 says, And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets. So we have to ask, which prophet? Which prophet or prophet spoke that he 
shall be called. He shall be what? Called. It didn't say his name would be, but he would be called right? a Nazarene. Yeshua of Nazareth. Yeshua ha Notsri. Notsri. Here we go right here. We have Isaiah 11 and 1. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. Right? Out of his roots. A branch shall grow out of his roots. So let's look at the Hebrew for a moment right here. Right? Um, where Yatsa'a, right? Choter, choter, mi geza'a, mi geza'a, mi geza'a, yeshai, or yeshai, where ne sere, where ne tser, where ne tser, where ne tser. There we go, right there, where ne tser. Boom, there we go. Where ne tser. Where nates are, me sha ra shau, me sha ra shau, me saras shara saras from his roots, yip yip rea or yifreya 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 fere fruit pere yifreya will spring will fruit will grow in other words. So let's bring this up. This is the first link that we have with what the prophet said, right? So this is to be fulfilled, and this has been fulfilled, right, in the Messiah Yeshua. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, a choter, a twig, in a sense. It's, it's a rod, but it can also have the idea of a twig. Like It seems small at first until it grow up. A choter, right? Out of the stem, out of the gazea, the gazea or the trunk or the stump of a tree, the stump of a tree. So the idea is that this tree had been chopped down, it had been felled, or that this tree has been planted, right? And it's an unused root meaning to cut down trees. Um, gazea, gazae, gazea, gazea, gazae. Right out of the stem of Yeshai, right? Yeshai or Jesse, Jeshai, Jeshai, Yeshai, Jesse, Jeshe, Jeshe, <laughs> and a branch. Now, this is the man who will be called the branch. Boom, the branch. So we have Netzer, right? Netzer. Let's bring this up now. This is now the relation. This is dealing with the relation. So we first part sought to prove that similar, right? But not the same. Here is the root that now shows that relation. Natsa. What's a natsa? Natsa is a shoot, right? Like the shoot of a tree or like a plant growth. Figuratively, it's a descendant. Descendant. It says from the age 5341. Which which word is Natsa? Natsa. See, they have the T S here. T S D S T and D. They transliterate. They alliterate, in the sense of greenness. Oh, he's the green one, almost like the Osar, right? The greenness as a striking color, right? As a striking color, a unique color, right? <laughs> Yes, so the branch, right? The branch right here. The man whose name is the branch. And the root is Natsa. Now you see Natsa. Natsa means, it's the H5341. Natsa, 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 Ha Notsri, Ha Notsri, Nazareth. To guard in a good sense. It means to protect. In a good sense, it means to maintain in a good, in a tobe, right? Tobe, ma'od, a tobe, a good, in a very good sense, it means to protect, to maintain, to obey, right? Or, or in a bad sense, it can mean to conceal, right? Now, the primitive root of this word in the KJV is translated as besiege, a hidden thing, 
a keep, something that is kept or keep, to keep, a keeper, keeping, a monument, to observe, to preserve, um, subtle, a preserver, or a watcher, as well as a watchman, a watchman. This is how this word Natsar, Natsa or Notsa, Notsar is translated in the KJV. So here is this root.